Hello there, my fellow cold-blooded fans of the Warhammer Fantasy Universe, and welcome. Welcome to another series of lore episodes, which will be covering the so-called Lizardman race. Like in my previous race introduction videos, today we're gonna learn a little bit about the Lizardmen in general, and then about their ancient history. I am your usual host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us start learning about the Lizardmen, shall we? The Lizardmen, sometimes known as the Cold Ones or the Children of the Gods, are an ancient, savage race of cold-blooded reptiles that were at one time the first and oldest civilization of the Warhammer world. Long before the rise of man, elf or dwarf, the empire of the Lizardmen ruled supreme. Alien, enigmatic, and without mercy, the Lizardmen were there when it all began, and will be there when the world draws its last dying breath, never tiring nor relenting, until order is finally restored on this chaotic, uncaring world. Such is what they were made to do, for they are the ancient servants of the Old Ones, the one true protectors of this realm. Once upon a time, in a long and forgotten age, the Lizardmen ruled over everything, dominating this ancient world during an age of primeval monsters. Although their realm is now partly in ruin and overgrown, they seek once more to rise up and reclaim that which had been lost millennia ago. While the task at hand remains impossible, the empire of the Lizardmen still fights on, unleashing their cold-blooded savagery upon any who would stand in their way on their sacred mission. From the lush jungles they come, beneath totems of gold, the lizardmen march to war, the ground trembling from the approach of their large and mighty reptilian armies. They go to battle for reasons indecipherable to others, an ancient plan known only to themselves. None can ever understand their motives, nor their ceaseless drive, for none truly understand that they are the rightful inheritors of the world, and it is their sacred, if inscrutable, duty to restore order across the planet. If this means the wholesale eradication of the lesser upstart races outside of the Great Plan, then the Lizardman Empire shall enact this world-spanning genocide once again. Utterly enigmatic, the Lizardmen have been stranded by their creators, the Old Ones, left to contemplate a world irrevocably changed. Over the millennia, the Lizardmen have sought after the clear guidance once applied by their almighty creators. Against the growing threat of an age-old enemy, the Lizardmen have slowly come to the realization that there is no gain in lamenting a bygone age, and that the time to enact the Great Plan is upon them. The origin of the Lizardmen is a tale that goes back to a primeval era, when the world was dark and largely encased by thick sheets of ice. Long before even chaos came to the world, in a time before elves and dwarves, the land was ruled by titanic monsters. These enormous creatures battled for dominance in the warmest regions. The ones nearest the equatorial band became the most highly contested areas. Some of these life forms were unthinking creatures of pure instinct. Others were established civilizations that rose and fall in that forgotten age. Of that time of eternal twilight, there is very little knowledge, although buried ruins and descendant creatures still remain. Into this brutal age came a mysterious race of godlike beings that plied the heavens in silver ships. The strangers, known as the Old Ones, came from beyond the stars where they ruled an empire that spanned not only the cosmos, but time itself. Their technology was advanced beyond imagination. To them, astrology and astronomy, science and magic were all one and the same. Each world in the Old Ones' empire was linked by a gateway. Some were small portals, allowing an individual to travel inconceivable distances with but a single step. Others, often situated in the cold void of space, were portals so large that vessels the size of a moon could pass through. In their travels across the endless expanse of the universe, 
one planet caught their eye, for they saw in it a unique and boundless potential. The old ones decreed that this world would have a central place in their unknowable plan, and stellar gates at either pole were created to allow easy access to this hopeful new colony. Before the designs for their newest planet could be set in motion, the old ones had to reshape it to better fit their needs. Using powers beyond mortal comprehension, they shifted the planet's orbit towards the warming sun. In time, the ice sheets retreated, verdant forests soon growing to cover the newly revealed land. The old ones created servants to tend to their needs. Thus was the first spawning of the Slan Mage Priests begun. They were the Grand Viziers, trusted creatures of prodigious intellect, and the only beings able to withstand direct contact with the near omnipotent Old Ones and comprehend their teachings. It was the Slan who were to guide the lesser races whose creation would soon follow. For upon the world, the Old Ones had encountered many primitive creatures including those that would one day be transformed into the first elves, men, and dwarves. Powerful and far-sighted, the Old Ones could create life even from these imperfect materials. They did encounter some creatures whose existence was incompatible with their plans. As the climate warmed, the Saurus were created to destroy these anomalies, and soon vast armies marched to war a fight to eradicate those native races that needed to be removed. The Old Ones frequently used the polar gateways to travel the cosmos, but in the meantime, they created further spawnings of Slan to execute their plan. While the Saurus brought order to the world with their brutal campaigns of destruction, greater projects were also undertaken. By command of the Old Ones, the Slan established the rainforest temple cities in the region that would one day become Lustria. The so-called Skinks were the technicians and the overseers. It was their role to direct the beast of burden to haul and heft the heavy loads. In this manner, the Lizardmen built fabulous structures that rose above the steaming jungle. The Old One's instructions to the Slan were very specific as to the locations where the temple cities and the many other architectural wonders were constructed across the globe. Each one was raised purposefully to form a vital nexus in a world-spanning geomantic web, which was an interlinked matrix of natural Earth energy that encompassed the planet. Each site was linked to the next one and the Old Ones were able to draw upon this vast reservoir of power to manipulate untold devices and enchantments of great power. The Slan Mage Priests were also able to tap into the geomantic web, and with its energies they could shift continents and further aid the unknowable plans of the Old Ones. So long as each link remained connected, they could be used to telepathically communicate with one another over vast distances. By entering a trance, the mage priests could transmit pure thoughts and hold councils of communion. All was not well in the world, however. Distressing signs began to manifest outside of the gateways at the planet's poles. They were but portals to another dimension, and it was from there that trouble arose. In the swirling madness of that otherworldly realm, nascent beings stirred malign intelligences that resented the Old One's trespasses. Disaster came all of a sudden. Whether due to enemy attacks or structural damage, the Old One's great polar gates, the means by which they traversed the stars, collapsed upon themselves. Next, it was chaos that spewed forth from this abominable realm. Meteors of congealed magic, a substance known as Warpstone, left contrails that set the skies aflame. The planet shuddered under thunderous impacts, with some meteorites burrowing like animals, gnawing deep into the world's foundation. A layer of warpstone dust was cast into the air, its mutating properties causing untold damage. Across the globe, the seas churned, and the forest canopies shook, convulsing with grotesque growth. Where the northern gateway had once been, there now throbbed a second moon, a green satellite made of pure warpstone. This would later become known as Morslib, 
Many cries were lifted to that sickly orb, as hideously twisted creatures were born, howling in agony. As their portals collapsed, the old ones disappeared, their fate unknown. Yet the disasters could have been worse, if the old one's most powerful servants, the Slan, had not staved off complete destruction by sealing much of the rent in reality. So great was the strain of that undertaking, that half of their number were slain, their brains melted by the incongruity of chaos. Despite this sacrifice, the Slan could only shrink the gap, they could neither close it, nor stem the tide of magical power that swept the planet. The old ones were gone, and the lizard men and the fledgling races were now abandoned before a new and diabolical foe. In the wake of the clouds of magic came the demonic legions of the chaos gods. They crystallized out of the burning madness, materializing in numbers beyond count. Each demon was a powerful facet of its master, an unnatural creature that burned with the urge to destroy. And so, the war for the mortal realm was begun. Faced with annihilation, the remaining Slan rallied, mustering armies the size of which had never before seen in the world. The demons attacked everywhere, but the lizardmen bore the brunt of the attack. What followed was a series of terrible wars, titanic clashes that spanned continents, lasted centuries, and claimed millions of lives. The Saurus met the demonic tide, able to match their ferocity and return it in kind. But the might of the Lizardmen did not rest solely with its armies. The Slan, atop their pyramid temples, gathered the rampant magical energies to fuel spells of unprecedented destruction. They gulped in the magic-infused air and belched forth firestorms, unleashed tidal waves, or split the earth asunder to lay waste to the invaders. In the war's opening stages, the Slan proved more powerful than even the most magically adept of the demons. However, as the chaos energies and unending reinforcements continued to flood into the world, the balance slowly began to shift. What happened next, however, is a story for another time. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the Lizardmen and their godly creators for today. Next time, if chaos doesn't consume us all, I will tell you about the wars of the Lizardmen against chaos, and how they evolved in the absence of their masters. Was this video enjoyable or informative? In that case, please consider clicking the like button and subscribing for more content. I thank you kindly for watching, and I wish you all a peaceful day. Sigmar's blessings be upon you.